I work with the Grameen Foundation. Those of you maybe interested or know about microcredit. Microcredit was started by an economics professor in Bangladesh. He was trying to figure out what caused grinding, multi-generational poverty. So he said, I'm going to go firsthand. He goes out to a village, starts talking to women about, you know, why, you're, you're making crafts, you're selling crafts. How can, how can you never get beyond a dollar or two dollars a day? And a dollar or two dollars a day, a billion people living at that level. Just one day away from starvation. What keeps you trapped here? And then he finds out. Well, they don't have enough money to buy the, the materials to make the craft, so they go to a money lender. The money lender is like a payday loan center. You know those payday loan centers we have? And they charge up to 1,000% interest right here in River City. They charge less interest, by the way, in Bangladesh. <laughs> but it's still about 50%, 100% interest. And then the person that loans you the money makes a deal with you. I'll only, I'll only loan you the money if I get control of what you make and I'll resell it. In this country, it was called sharecropping. So he would always give them so much less money, they could never get a surplus, never get a savings, they could never invest in any growth. And so Muhammad Yunus, the, the professor, said, well, how much would it, how much would it take to, to satisfy your debt? $43. $43? I'm a professor, but even I can afford that. And then what, what would it take to get you started again? $27? So he starts loaning these tiny bits of money to women. And he, and he, he, under, he, he comes to understand two things. Loan money to women, not to men. <laughs> and th this is true. And they found this out worldwide. Women keep the money they make in the village. They reinvest it in their children's education. They reinvested in their business. Men tend to gamble and drink. <laughs> I'm not making this up. So almost all microloan programs rent nearly exclusively or exclusively to women. I know I shouldn't be saying that in front of this group. But. And then he finds out, he, he makes an innovation. The innovation is called social collateral. So he gets five women to agree to co-guarantee each other's loans because they have no collateral. By the way, this is like subprime loan on steroids. This is the sub, 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 this basement loaning. People have no credit, no assets, no nothing, no history, no proven business ability. There's no way this can work. So that was in 1977. So in 2008, 133 million people, 133 million families of the poorest of the poor are beneficiaries of microcredit. The repayment rate around the world is over 97%. In some places, it's over 99%. An average loan portfolio is in the 70 to 80%. I'm saying people like you and me. Because social collateral ends up being a far more powerful motivator than the house that I have. Guaranteeing my loan. Duh. So, what does the Grameen Foundation do? They don't hoard it. There's a Grameen Bank. They don't hoard it. They say, we're going to teach everybody in the world who wants to do microcredit to do microcredit. So they've set up a program called Bankers Without Borders, not just for bankers. You go to the Grameen Foundation site and sign up. And you just list what you're good at. It could be marketing. It could be HR. Because they're trying to develop people to be good bankers and so forth around the world. So J.P. Morgan is a huge proponent of Bankers Without Borders. And what's great about it is you can volunteer without going. I mean, if you want to go to some place and do something for a couple of weeks or a month, you can. If you just want to do it on your job, on Tuesday afternoons, over the internet, you can do it. There's all different kinds of ways you can serve. Gosh, if we just ask that what if, Wonderful things will happen. I mean, if you think about microcredit and the story I just told you about the Grameen Foundation, it, it, it's all of those things. It invites people who've never been part of the financial world into the financial world so that they can build a sustainable future. 
They invented how to give money to people, lend money to people, and get paid back who have no credit, no history, no business experience. And they idealize the process because in, in their world, all the bankers go to the people. The people don't have to go to the bankers. So when people begin to think this way, major things happen. So I know that these are, are, are dramatic stories, but they all follow a theme. There's senior sponsorship. Somebody is convinced that there's a business case to do something that's really going to matter to humanity, really going to make a difference to the environment. There's senior sponsorship. Often, little initial involvement. And then it's driven by engaged employees. And in some case, involve customers who come up with the idea. All people need to do is be released. When corporate social responsibility becomes personal social responsibility, the world will change.